Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of what happened in England. Thought it's a short video to go in because we already talked uh, quite some about England. So we just have to look at midweek fixtures, uh, a little bit what is happening on the weekend and the FA Cup. Loads of stuff happening. I actually put FA Cup here to the side. <laughs> Georgia's was in Premier League uh, tour towards the back and the jersey choice was rather straightforward. Of course it's Liverpool. I mean they had to rather big wins overall and yeah we have big showdowns coming in uh april that one's for sure i think everything will be fixed on uh england uh, because the almost the biggest fixtures will be we get a whole lot of liverpool against manchester city but i want to start out in the premier league where um we had actually quite some midweek games. Spurs winning twice this week, hence they are far up there, which is something that I haven't done in a long while because always oh, win-loss, 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 win-loss. Now two wins in, in a row. They started uh, um, with a win against Brighton away from home, 2-0. Uh, um, I think it was overall rather convincing. Christian Romero and Harry Kane uh, being among the goal scorers. However, the big one was Arsenal-Liverpool, which, to be honest, I watched the Champions League um, live, but I had a thought that is actually the bigger game. That's the big. That's bigger than whatever is happening um, in the Champions League on that Wednesday. Um, I ended up then actually seeing most of the um, second half, uh, all of the second half actually, uh, late first half and then all of the second half in a replay where I actually didn't know the result, which uh, in the morning after which was actually quite fun so i uh, actually can't talk i mean that was a game where arsenal really gave it their all they really uh gave liverpool trouble not necessarily threatening goal image although i think allison had to make a good save uh but even after the half there was a five minute period around the 50 i mean liverpool came out with a different um attitude and uh had a chance, but then there was a right about uh, Arsenal. I think it was Martinelli who had this great run where he just gets the final pass wrong. Uh, should have assisted instead of, you know, the, the assist went nowhere and just into that momentum builder for Arsenal. Liverpool kills it all with a brilliantly uh, played pass from uh, Thiago into Diogo Jota, who makes it 1 0. Uh, there was really this was the first real chance by Liverpool, a complete momentum killer. Uh, and then Klopp says, let, let, let's bring on the Cat Cavalry, let's keep piling on. Salah comes on, Firmino comes on, and Firmino missed uh, one, but then the, the ball is being kept and it goes to 2 0. Decider. Liverpool did not necessarily play great, however, they get the win. And that's all that counts in many ways. And that win. Now put them within a point of Manchester City. And yes, if we look at the final schedule, um, probably Liverpool has a slightly tougher program. However, it's pretty amazing. And and, and I think I, I, uh, over the past three seasons, there's only one point uh, is separating uh, Klopp and Guardiola uh, in many ways, which is also pretty amazing stat. At the moment... My model says 61% Manchester City for the title, 39% for Liverpool. And I think I can justify that by simply saying, A, uh, Liverpool has a slightly tougher schedule, but I think that doesn't play as much into it as Manchester City has still a point more, which means they can afford a draw in the head-to-head -head and still be ahead, uh, which would be a slight win. It's a must-win for Liverpool in that sense. And Manchester City is at home. So all those combined uh, make it more or less that uh, it's um, it, uh, it's still tilting Manchester City, but it's got a whole lot more tight than we even expected. And even if you look at the uh, win and loss uh, column, the difference is more or less a draw more. I mean, uh, City has a win more, has, has a loss more than Liverpool. However, Liverpool has two draws more. And that's all that's in between them. And Liverpool even hold the head to head advantage, uh, the goal difference advantage at the moment, which could also be huge for things come, coming forward. Uh, as for the ratings, I think um, the way I look at it, 
it seems like that uh, Manchester City is just a smidgen ahead uh, of Liverpool. Yeah, just a smidgen ahead. There is barely anything separating these two teams. So it really is a showdown. The one thing I got to say, now Liverpool had a, a whole uh, streak of wins. Yes, Inter won, but you know, within the league. Um, but streaks are there to end. I maybe famous last words because I really didn't see that a uh, couple of seasons back. Or was it? Th- in, yeah, no, three seasons back when uh, City won the amazing tie title race. I never thought that both teams will win out there. I don't see Liverpool winning out. That I, I can say, as great as they are, I don't see City winning being out. Uh, but I don't want to make a statement like that for City either, because, you know, Champions League is coming, coming as well. What I think is that this title race might actually keep City sharp. And I think it's quite likely to me that City will win the Champions League. If they keep, keep it sharp and have to focus a little bit uh, more there, I can very well see Manchester City winning the Champions League. But yeah, this huge 2-0 win basically opened up the league um, on the top as well. And suddenly the Premier League that just two months ago seemed like everything settled looks super, super, super exciting. And I can see how my focus is now shifting. You know, I watched a lot of uh, German League at the the beginning of the year. Um, I always watch uh, Serie A, but at the moment my focus shifts definitely more towards the Premier League. And I actually find myself watching loads of Premier League games at the expense of, as I said, uh, Germany and especially La Liga. So um, just putting it up there. So yeah, that was that game. Uh, We have then, of course, another huge win for Everton against Newcastle. In the last minute, more or less, through an Iwobi goal. Essential win for Everton. They needed this one. Uh, And Newcastle, who had this great run, uh, also a little bit stalling at, at, at the moment. But... That will give Everton so much breathing room in their re- relegation battle at the moment. They have, with um, a game uh, less, a three-point cushion over Everton, uh, over Watford. So uh, it definitely points now towards the fact that Everton might actually survive. Same thing goes for Leeds, who had an amazing count comeback win. They were 2 0 down at Wolves. Not necessarily. Um, I don't. I must say that, that it was all all that. Um, deserve it this 2-0 however um that leads were coming back we never saw it i mean they were definitely the luckier team in this one i think uh wolf probably would have deserved the win uh even though i thought that the 2-0 at like the half was probably a teeny bit too high but it all changed with a yellow red for jimenez and then uh harrison pokes more or less one in um and just uh, three minutes later rodrigo may may mix two two and then a link just wills it in for a three two win Another absolutely vital win for and another win for Jesse Marsh. And now with those two wins in a row, Leeds actually look at the moment rather safe. Uh, I still have to say 23% chance for uh, Leeds to get re- relegated because they have three games more than Burnley. Uh, Everton at 33%. Brentford, uh, we'll get to them in a uh, sec. Also kind of now uh, look looking a little bit more steady at 30 points. And Newcastle and Crystal Palace at 31. I don't think we should consider them for relegation at this point. Uh, moving forward, uh, Arsenal coming back from the loss to um, uh, Liverpool. And a little bit moaning about having to play so early, which I I, I never like. So, so so they're the only the only team that actually had to play it twice now in the nine period. They again and get a, actually a pretty good win at Aston Villa. So uh, Arsenal also staying on track for a top four spot, which is very much theirs with seventy two percent. However, uh, Spurs, thanks on the strength of Son and Kane. Uh, Son scoring two goals and Kane assisting, of course, as always. Uh, get a 3-1 win over West Ham. West Ham team that was clearly depleted from the Europa League fight against Sevilla. So uh, maybe an easy win for, for Spurs. I have at the moment 72% Arsenal, 20% uh, Spurs and 7% United, 1% only for West Ham, of making into the top four. Um, I still lean very much Arsenal, although we have to say there is the head-to-head is coming up and that could very well decide. But on the other side, I do not trust Spurs to put a winning run together. 
maybe they will, maybe they won't. So we gotta see. And in all the stuff, I forgot now, uh, Leicester, of course, beat uh, Brentford 2 1. Brentford, as I said, not quite safe for Leicester. It means basically their midfield spot is secured. But I don't, this will be more or less a season to forget unless they do something in the Conference League. So that's it for the Premier League at this very, very moment. But we also had the FA Cup quarterfinal. Um, to talk talk about where Chelsea got a very professional 2 0 win over, over Middlesbrough with uh, even Lukaku scoring, so um, everything seeming fine there. And Chelsea suddenly, uh, seemingly, uh, there are enough beats that they might actually have a new owner very soon. Uh, Lukaku and Ziyech scoring uh, to two goals there. Then Crystal Palace absolutely destroy Everton 4 0. Uh, that comes a little, little bit out of nowhere. Manchester City scoring over Southampton is probably a little bit, from what I hear, I didn't see much, it's a little bit uh, higher than one uh, would have uh, expected from seeing the game, but you know, 4-1. And then I saw the second half of Liverpool against Nottingham Forest, where, um, for, from what I hear now, in the first half, Liverpool was, was the bad team, despite having many, many changes. Nottingham Forest actually really having chances and taking the game to Liverpool. It was a real good cup fight going up and down. But again, once Klopp brings the cavalry on, there was not even Salah and Salah Mana, uh, Mane. Salah and Mana. Salah and Mane needed. Um, and uh, it's still Jota in the 78. Looked a little, little, bit, little bit offside, but if the replay, I know the camera angle wasn't good. I already thought, yeah, it might not be. And so it was not. And the goal stood and it was a 1-0 win for Liverpool. Meaning we have the top three in the semi-final plus Crystal Palace. And now, of course, it was all down to the draw. And while one might say that City against Crystal Palace and Chelsea against Liverpool would have been maybe the fairer draw. No, what do we get? We get Chelsea against Crystal Palace. Uh, kind of southwest London derby. And we get the big one. Manchester City against Liverpool around the 16th. Um, they play on the 10th already um, against each other. It could be that, that they, move, move, they move to the 70th. They play already on the 10th uh, against each other in the Premier League, which is huge. Then you have Champions League in between. Uh, Liverpool will, will probably say, yeah, fortunately we can rest uh, some players there against Benfica, which sounds weird uh, to, to, to say it this way. And then uh, Manchester City, uh, and then they have to play at Wembley against Manchester City. Uh, this week, I think it's pretty clear what will be on everyone's menu. So yeah, uh, FA Cup, interesting. There are still all four titles available for Liverpool. I just don't see it. It's just such an uh, unimaginable feat. But the one thing that I have to, have to say that Liverpool have now that they didn't have like two or even three seasons ago is that they have now squad depth up front. And the club can really, really change it, change it, change it up. The squad is a whole lot more deeper. However, I still think the Manchester City squad is the better one. So I would say Manchester City is going to take at least one of those titles. And if you had to ask me, probably the Champions League. In any case, those are my thoughts on the happenings in England. Please give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel for more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might actually enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell, so in order to get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe.